Canterbury made a good start with a try after only eight minutes. A clever switch of play by Peter Kelly and Paul Langmack enabled winger Sandy Campbell to squeeze over in the corner. But from then on, it was all noughts. The Bears' new names finally blended together to score two tries in three minutes. The first came after a long pass by Mark Cannon, found Fred Teasdale. And Teasdale put centre Brett French in for try in his first match for his new club. Then former Brisbane winger Les Kiss showed he's got plenty of talent. The three Kiwis, Graham, Friend and Philip Piner handled before Kiss took the pass on halfway. He used a perfect in and away to beat Mick Potter to race ahead for a good winger's try. With his conversion, the Big Bears were having a picnic leading 14-4 at half time. There was nothing fluky about the Bears today, even allowing for Canterbury backing up from their midweek match. With Kiwi test coach Graham Lowe on hand, Mark Graham turned on a big one, powering his way over wide out to send the Bears to an 18-4 lead. Norse Mark Cannon ended the scoring when he putted a field goal to give the Bears their best win so far this year. 19-4 in an upset. At Seaford Oval, the North Sydney Bears got off to a bright start when winger Les Kiss continued his good form by crossing for his fourth try of the season and when Philip Painter converted, North's led by six points to nil. But the Raiders hit the lead for the first time in the match about 14 minutes before the break when former test winger Terry Fay raced 80 metres for his try and the Raiders were back in business with an 8-6 lead. Just after half-time, a try by Gary Belcher kicked the Raiders further ahead sparking a second half point scoring spree as the Bears lose their second on the trot by 32 points to six. Enormous pressure in the first half, trying to cut back the North Sydney lead, but the defence of the entire North Sydney team, wait for this word, was nothing short of heroic. They were great. A tough old-fashioned game of rugby league with no quarter asked or given. North's hooker Rex Wright deserves a special mention for a great sustained defensive effort. I think he did about 45 or 50 tackles and winning three scrums against the head from Mosley. So this was the way the game went. Now, if North can play this well on a weekly basis, they'd be in the top three. They were really good. And I'm not taking anything away from Parramatta, and I don't think Parramatta players would take anything away from the Bears either. But the Bears conceded stupid penalties within kicking range. Uh, the only difference, really, between the two Two sides. There's the first try coming up to North Sydney from a Filipino bomb and uh, Cannon uh, was able to get his hands to it and pull it out. Uh, Clayton Friend had an excellent game. I'm happy to report I've been baking him a fair bit, but I still think he's not quite quick enough. But by gee, his defence was great last week and he pulls off a couple of astonishingly good tackles. You're going to see those. I'll come back to that little incident in a minute. I've spoken about Parramatta leading a charmed life with penalties uh, of late. And that was one of them. A great move coming up here. Great pass from Thomas uh, Graham, Mark Graham. Uh, went to, to young Florimo. Then over this fella, Les Kiss, and he can run. And it took a great tackle there from Eric Groth to stop a try right beside the post. The referee there... Uh, Mr O'Donnell saying that uh, he couldn't get the ball down and North Sydney were very unhappy about that one. Mark Graham, Gavin Jones, Freddie Teasdale, Rex Wright, uh, Steve Hansen, all formidable in a big pack. And a great run from Kenny sets up the, cry, the try to uh, Ella from the growth pass. And there's the zip zip man well and truly in full flight. What a great sight it is to see. Rex Wright, Steve Hansen, a formidable big pack as I've mentioned. Price, Wynn, Jerd, Mosley were the best for the eel side. But a first class game of rugby league and only one point in it, 10 points to nine. A couple of incidents out of this game that I think you'll enjoy having a look at. A good run by this young Florimo fellow, the young centre. Here he goes and he sets up a very bright passage of play. A very good handoff of Laurie on that occasion, able to get himself right through the centre. And you can see that North Sydney keep the ball alive with a little even bit, a bit of fancy football there. Getting the passes away with Teasdall finally getting it out on the right and that's where it, uh, it comes to an end. The second incident I want to show you, the uh, possibility of a North Sydney try that was put down here as Jones goes through to uh, Philip Pena. He gets a pass away and French, unfortunately, with a line wide open there, put it down. That was fairly early in the game too. Could have been a uh, good one. Now, I'm happy to compliment Clayton Friend. I've given him a bit of a bake at different times. Look at this tackle on Eric Groth. This is superb stuff. Big Eric is in full flight. It's a David and Goliath contest. And look at the little bloke right around his legs. And that was a superb tackle. That could have been a try 60 yards down the field, but for that tackle. So that's the way it goes. Now, sadly, Donnie McKinnon, a good bloke, one of the nicest men you could ever meet, a policeman, a very fine fella. Don't do stupid things on the football field, Don. This was the reason why the side lost. Stupid, dumb penalties within kicking range. Look at him grab hold of the foot of the play Parramatta player. That was two points, only 25 yards out. Absolutely ridiculous, Don. You can't do things like that. Chicken Norton, do take notice. The uh, coach of the side, try to discipline your men not to give the game away with things like that. 
a little bit of a, a show of how great this Kennedy is. Now watch him slip here, still able to get to his feet, still able to surge forward, and then still able to offload the pass correctly. Now most players would have gone to ground. Here's a beautiful move, showing his great acceleration, the long pass from Sterling, puts him into the gap, the acceleration, he glances around as you can see, left to right, like a traffic cop, and a, a, took a top tackle, and I mean a top tackle from Freddie Teasdale, number 10 there, to get him down. Now, I mentioned that incident earlier about Penrith leading a charmed life. I've already told you in separate weeks about stealing the ball incidents that I've seen Penrith get away with. Now, here we got Mosley coming up with a classic bit of interference, trying to stop Wright, who did milk it a little bit, I've got to be honest. But nonetheless, he was interfered with, trying to get the balls uh, played so that they could have a quick tap from the quarter there after the ball had gone into the in goal area. And he was knocked down by Mosley, and that should have been a penalty. And I'm amazed that the referee missed it. Now, the disallowed try again from this uh, very good run from Kiss. Unfortunately, unless you've got your camera situated on the head-on shot there, you're not going to be able to make any sort of decision on it. But you can see Growth has him up in the air, and the referee probably, Giles O'Donnell, was probably quite right in ruling that he was unable to get the ball down. That was that game, a damn good game of football. Make no bones about it. The local Northside derby was a try-scoring feast with nine in all. North led off after eight minutes when Mark Graham combined with winger Les Kiss to send Mark Cannon in to score. Manly's Cliff Lyons was looking for a big game against his former club, and when he took off from dummy half after 12 minutes, nothing was going to stop him scoring a great solo try. And wasn't he pleased about it? 21 minutes into the match and the tries kept coming. Mark Graham, who was proving unstoppable, sent a clever pass around the corner for young Colt Greg Florimo to steam across. With both sides tackles shy, it was non-stop attack, as Cliff Lyons and Des Hass were combined for Chris Close to score. Manly now ahead 12 points to 8. But Mark Graham was really having a huge game. From a standing start, he went through a Manly pack who until today had been dominant in the Premiership. When play resumed, Mark Graham picked up from where he left off. He scooped up a loose pass from Cliff Lyons and headed for the line. Then again, as was the pattern, Manly bounced back. Ron Gibbs sent Mitchell Cox into the clear and the former Bear lined up Chris Close for his second try. Manly now ahead 20 to 18. Mark Cannon put North back in front with his second try before Cliff Lyons lofted a pass inside his own half to Dale Shearer, whose pace and swerve sealed the seesawing match for Manly, in which the lead changed six times before the Sea Eagles got home 28 to 24 in a very entertaining match. Okay. The week before, the lead changed four times in the first half, and North and St George were level 12 all at the half-time break, and there have been several excellent tries scores. The second half was a continuation of the action with Craig Young's brilliance, as uh, Mark has suggested, uh, and the ball skills that he has, and the pace of Warford and Johnston being just a little bit too much for a game, but very unlucky North team who have now recorded five consecutive losses up until yesterday. And there was a great try right at the start with Les Kiss. He's been one of your good buyers, oh, hasn't he? Oh, sensational. Yeah. And were you disappointed that he didn't get a run in the state of origin? Well, I was, I was expecting he'd at least get a reserve spot. He's, he's a good enough player by far. He's very, very pacey, and he seems to be like Dale Shearer, one of those players that doesn't make terribly many mistakes. No, for sure. He's, and he can do anything with the ball. You know, he, when he runs from dummy half, he pushes off big forwards, and he's he's more like a, a, a boasted or a... Um, uh, Ferguson. Yes, yes, I know the type you mean. Look at this pass from <laughs> Craig Young to Fafita. I don't think Fafita knew he had the ball. <laughs> he was just there. And uh, they're the sort of little beautiful things. Now, Gavin Jones has got himself a run in the State of Origin match for Queensland. He's got some skills, hasn't he? He certainly has, yeah, and a big bloke too. I think so, he could make his career up there on Tuesday night. So you've got uh, you've got a couple of players from Queensland that are really top liners, haven't you? For Kiss sure. And Jones. Well, all our boys this year have been great. I think Brett French... Uh, He's going to be a sensation. He, just the sum of things he does on a football field, he's extremely fast and uh, he's a well-balanced footballer. He's got it all. Yes. Uh, I was uh, particularly pleased with the great support you're getting there. Um, Rex Wright, I've already mentioned him. I've got a bit of a rap about him because he's one of a number of very good hookers that are going around in Sydney, but I also like his ball distribution work from dummy half. Here's the pass you were talking yeah. about. We'll show that again on a replay. It almost happens too quickly, and the next thing you know, the camera took the dummy too, and there's Walford <laughs> 25 yards upfield by the time the cameraman realised the pass had been got away. And that sort of thing must have knocked your backside in. This one at right at the end, that's you reaching for the ball, getting a pass away. Now, the referee, you said, had put his hand up to say what? Well, I think he signalled that it was play on, and then uh, we, were, we were call back. I'm not too sure which pass he signalled play on, though. It was, uh, one was touch and float by Sir George player. Yeah. So you don't really think that the try would have made, would it have made a result difference in the end result in the game, do you think? Well, I hope, you know, I'd like to think it would have, Rex, yeah. but, uh, you know, that's uh, shut the gate at this stage. 
Uh, Walford made a number of good strong busts. That occasion he made a good one and, and got a pass back inside. But this is the only time I figure that the North Sydney defence folded when O'Connor was able to go back and pick up a loose ball and give it a Johnson coming on the burst up the sideline. Uh, the rest of the time, the defence looked pretty solid. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, we've been, haven't been going too bad in the defence department. Uh, we've well, that's a change, isn't it? Well, yeah, that is a may, change. maybe. Come on, I've been, watch, yeah. I've been watching North <laughs> Sydney since 19, whatever it is, 1938 or something. Yeah. And they've shown some awful defence over Well, yeah, I haven't been playing for them that long, though, Rex. <laughs> no, 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 don't start sending me up. <laughs> Philip Painter. How has he come along from a North Sydney point of view? Are you happy totally with him? Yeah, you yeah. know, to me he's I a... mean, he's a Kiwi mate of yours. Are yeah. you going to say anything bad about him? No, Isn't he a lazy not. player at times? No, uh, he's not a, not a real good trainer at times, but he's not a, not a lazy uh, player. To me, he, he keeps saying to me, he's amazed why he wonders why he didn't come to North Sydney the first... When he he's happy there for the first time yeah, in Sydney sure, football, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at a couple of things out of this. This is the Craig Young package that I put together. It's just a sequence of butt-edited things. Here, opening the game, he gets a pass away to Lanane, and Lanane can't handle it, but there was a, a try on there. His great ability to get beyond the advantage line and still stand in tackles. Yeah. No pass from the end of this, but, I mean, he's done exactly the right thing. He pops a very nice pass here. Uh, there he is. And right through to uh, Selby and then on to Johnson. He ran about 45 yards. The one we've already shown you. See him there walking into position on the blind side. From Guider he gets the pass. And it, quick as lightning, it's out of his hands into Fafita. And Fafita really, I don't think, knew he had the ball in his hands there. He suddenly got it. He felt it in his stomach and he went over and scored the try. Uh, another one here where he looks on the outside, throws the little dummy, steps his way through. Any time you can make a break, even if you can't get a pass away at the end of those, they're good, aren't they? Yeah, because you've sure. got everyone moving backwards. Yeah. And, uh... This is, this is sensational, this guy here. No, this is, a, this is not the one. This is another occasion getting beyond the advantage line. But the last one, I think you'll find this might be it. Yeah. Now, we slow it right down. No, it's not the last one. It's the second last one, but it's an equally good one for feet are living off him again. He's like a, uh, a Shearer's dog chasing him there on the outside. And that was uh, ended up in an intercept. Here we go. This is the one. Now, you've got to be very quick to see him lose the ball there to mm, Walford. Yeah. And the camera picked it up uh, a little bit later, and our videotape editor just uh, edited a little bit out of that to get the dead action out. They're the sorts of things this bloke can do. He was astonishing in the difference, I think, between the two sides For on the sure. day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the North Sydney bombing a try to Florimo, and uh, we'll have a look at that again. There's a little uh, kick being put through by Cannon. It goes from Cannon back to Mark. And Mark then gets the pass away to Florimo, who's not very happy about being pulled back. He banged the ball down on the ground, but he's a nice young player. Yeah, very good. And a 19 state player, too. Tuesday. Yes, he's playing on uh, Tuesday night up there, isn't he? Yeah. Did he have a head injury of some description? Has he got yeah, stitches? I think he got it. No, he did, I don't know if he got uh, stitches in the weekend, but he got a pretty, pretty good bang on his hip, I think. Ah. And, uh, so he came off. And an astonishing thing happened. I'm not sending the player up. In the hurly-burly of the moment, anything can happen. Watch Lenane attempt to kick the ball here and miss it completely. A little grubber kick attempt coming through. Now, you, you know, you wouldn't believe a player of, of his skill, known skill, could do a thing like that. OK, that's last week. At North Sydney Oval, the Bears dominated proceedings for the first 40 minutes, scoring three tries to nil to hold a commanding 17-0 lead at half-time. The Kiwi connection of Graham Friend and Filipina caused havoc with the shaky Cronulla defence, and Filipina had a hand in each of the three Bears' tries. After the first half onslaught, Cronulla were well and truly out of the match, and the Bears continued their picnic running out easy winners by 27 points to six. With the bulldozers set to move in on the Sydney sports ground, the Roosters were determined to do well on their home ground for the last time this season. And with the match only six minutes old, a simple set play from Spina to Gary Worth was a sign of things to come. Nine minutes later, Shu McGahn filled the defence with a perfect pass back inside for Worth, who showed his acceleration to score his second try. The hapless Bears couldn't do a thing right, and when Gary Worth made it a hat-trick of tries in the first 20 minutes, the half-time scoreline read 15-2. Certainly there was more enthusiasm on display during the break than the Bears showed in the first half. But to their credit, Norse came out blazing in the second half with a try to Brett French after seven minutes, and again scoring in the latter stages of the match to trail by only 15-14. However, East put the issue beyond doubt right on full time with the try to Spina, making the final result, Roosters 21, Bears 14. At Redfern Oval, Norse without their test star shot to the lead when former Randwick Rugby Union winger Greg Lennon accepted an intercept to race away. The Bears' second try also came from an intercept and had Norse leading 12-0 after 16 minutes. 
Casey, though, fell awkwardly in grounding the ball. Then came the South Revival with two tries, locking the scores together at 14 all at half time. This try goes to Dejura. Souths continued to roll forward in the second half with some great attacking flair, producing four more tries and a crucial runaway victory. At Leichhardt Oval, Balmain's reputation as a Premiership contender took an early setback. Norths, who were thrashed by Souths last weekend, gave Canberra a drubbing today to remain in contention for fifth spot, with Simon Brockles setting the scene early. The Bears ran in four tries in the first half, with two of them going to Greg Lennon, with this one giving him another opportunity to show off his pace. North's third try came from a clever crossfield kick, though there's some doubt from this angle as to whether Cannon may have knocked on before he grounded the ball. Replacement Graham Murchie gave Phil Carey the worst bounce of his life as Lennon raced away to give North a match-winning lead at half-time. Murchie capped off a good game with a solo try through a non-existent Raiders defence. And North Sydney 14 defeated Manly 8. More than 16,000 fans packed into Bear Park to watch the local Northside derby. And Manly got away to a great start, scoring after just two minutes with Phil Blake flying over wide out. But from then on, it was North's day. Mark Cannon handled twice before Mark Graham sent fullback Paul Conlon steaming over wide out, and North went to an early 6 4 lead. Almost from the kickoff, the Bears were in again. Gavin Jones opened Manly right up with a powerful burst, taking tacklers with him. He found Fred Teasdale, who went further downfield before kicking ahead for the speedy rugby union winger Greg Lennon. The former rugby union speedster won the race to score a spectacular try, and the Bears led 12 4 at the break. Manly wasted little time after the restart, scoring after three minutes. Cliff Lyons made the opening for David Ronson to score wide out. Once again, referee Bill Harrigan had his hands full. He sent Norse prop Martin Beller off from this scrum, and five other players were later sin been to different stages in a fiery second half. But Norse capped off a great week when Conlon sealed the match with a penalty, and the Bears are in the five with St George. St George, they blew their semi-final playoff chances with only one point out of an 18-all draw with the Canberra Raiders. Parramatta 22, Manly 6, and North 17, Cronulla 10, at Ronson Field, the Sharks had most of the early running, but the Bears scored the first try at the 16-minute mark when Fred Teasdall forced his way over. Five minutes later, the Bears moved further ahead through prolific try scorer Greg Lennon. Just before half-time, the Sharks bit back when Mark Wakefield scored. However, the Bears still held a 12-8 lead at the break. The first 20 minutes of the second half was evenly contested before the Bears got some breathing space when Nigel Tate went over, wide out. With five minutes remaining, the Sharks missed a golden opportunity to equalise when Andrew Ettinghausen dropped the ball over the line. The Bears put the issue beyond doubt when Mark Cannon potted a field goal. But despite winning 17-10, the Bears will need to improve on today's form if they're to beat Balmain on Tuesday.